Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we'll take a closer look at some of the models that I printed on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to get a closer look at some of the prints that I did on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the prints because I didn't want the X1 Carbon's video to run too long. So I thought some of you might be interested in spending a little more time looking at them. This video is going to be light on dialogue and heavy on putting prints on a turntable and letting them spin around for a couple of minutes at a time. And so let's just get right into it, shall we? Here is an overview of the models I'll be showing in alphabetical order. There's the Autodesk Kickstarter test, the Clearance Castle from Maker's Muse, the Flexi Factory Imperial Dragon, GG, a multi-material print, McGuybeer's Articulated Dragon, the small neutron tube from Clockspring, and a bust of Julius Caesar that's also a pen holder. I call him Orange Julius for obvious reasons. All of these models were printed with the stock 0.2 millimeter layer height settings in the Bamboo Studio Slicer with no adjustments, changes, or tweaks, not even printing temperatures. I'll be comparing these to what the print times would be for an Ender 3S1, also with stock 0.2 millimeter layer height settings as estimated by Prusa Slicer. I trust Prusa Slicer's estimates because they've almost always been within a few minutes of the actual print time. Okay, here we go. Here's the Autodesk Kickstarter test print. While I was shuffling these models around to make the videos, I managed to break two more of the spikes. I found one of the pointy bits and put it in front of the model. You can see there's a couple of issues related to bridging on this particular print, both on the unsupported edges of the top platform and the bridging test itself. The overhang test performed really well, only getting rough on the 20 and 15 degree overhangs. This would take almost five hours on an Ender 3, but was only an hour and a half on the X1 Carbon. So here's the Maker's Muse Clearance Castle. Hopefully the white filament doesn't look as blown out as it did on the X1 Carbon video. White filament can be really hard to get on camera. This would have taken four and a half hours on an Ender 3, but was only uh, about an hour and 15 minutes on the X1 Carbon. Bridging on this model was better than the Autodesk one, and the only issues were on that gentle curve at the top of the drawbridge. And here it is with the puzzle solved and the gate open. Here's that huge Flexi Factory Imperial Dragon that I printed in a silk color gradient PLA. The only issue I can see with it at all is that the backs of the antlers are just a tiny bit rough. This printed in under 8 hours with 0.2 millimeter layer height, but would ordinarily take something like 26 hours on an Ender 3 at that resolution. Here's that super cute GG model printed in black, red, and white PLA. It came out really good, though you can see there were a couple of places where a stray bit of black got onto one of the eyes. I'll just leave him spinning around here for a bit. Back to the dragons again, this time with McGuybeer's Articulated Dragon. This one is smaller than the Flexi Factory one and printed in about 5 hours. It would have taken about 14 hours on an Ender 3. Also, it looks really good in this silk gold PLA. Here 
Here's the Neutron tube in that same silk gold PLA. This was an under four hour print on the X1 Carbon, again at 0.2 millimeter layer height that would have taken over 18 hours on an Ender 3 with no tweaks to the settings. There are a couple of little surface pits, but the vertical sides are really smooth. And this fine fellow is Orange Julius, the Julius Caesar pen holder printed in Orange Polyterra PLA from Polymaker. He's got a little bit of beard stubble under his chin where the built-in supports were. At five and a half hours versus 24 hours, this is an incredible print. Plus, he's really good at holding pens. So hopefully these close-ups give you a better idea of the print quality I've been getting on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. This printer has a serious wow factor, and if you haven't watched the first look video about the X1 Carbon, there's a link in the description. Well, 3D printing prints, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.